Yeah. Yeah. Uh, right, over the next few weeks, we're hitting the road with Annabelle Croft. She takes us on a beautiful tour of Yorkshire in her very own camper van, Camp and Vanabelle. Today, she's starting her trip at the stunning Robin Hood's Bay before heading up the coast to historical town of Whitby. Dramatic coastlines, stunning scenery and cities steeped in history. Yorkshire is one of the most diverse and beautiful regions in the UK. And thanks to the Bronte sisters, it's one of those places I've always wanted to explore, but I've never had the time until now. So join me and my Vanabel as I tour the rolling hills of Northern England to find out what I've been missing. I'm starting my Yorkshire adventure on the coast, but before I begin exploring, I wanted to introduce you to my camper van named Vanabel. A few years ago, my late husband Mel and I converted an old delivery van into a cosy camper van with the idea of exploring the best of Britain together. Life doesn't always work out the way you plan, and although I have some wonderful memories of us in Vanabelle, I want to continue what we started and spend more time discovering Britain. So today I'm pitching up at Bayness Farm to visit the picturesque fishing village of Robin Hood's Bay. Wandering through these pathways, you can just imagine the sailors and smugglers walking these same steps hundreds of years ago. And there's one person who knows all the folklore that went on here, and that's Rose, who runs the Robin Hood's Bay Ghost Walk. Robin Hood's Bay is steeped in stories of the supernatural. I mean, it sits between two supernatural thresholds, the wild Yorkshire moors, once known as the Bridge of Dread, completely inaccessible, very, very dangerous, easy to die up there, roamed by wolves, highwaymen and ne'er-do-wells. And of course, the other supernatural threshold is the wild North Sea, known in these parts as the Widow Maker. And out there, it is a veritable graveyard of shipwrecks. And from the coastline to the coroner's room, Rose has even more unsettling tales of the bay. This is the old mortuary where they used to bring the dead. And as I understand it, it was purpose-built yeah. to deal with all the bodies washing in from the shipwrecks. Oh, my goodness. And from shipwrecks to smuggling. The smugglers of Robin Hood's Bay really used the local fear of ghosts to their advantage when running their swashbuckling and very secret operations. But they would meet here in the old Mariner's Tavern uh, in secret to hatch the plans that would eventually turn Robin Hood's Bay into the richest village in the country. But they had to transport contraband inland to get the best price for it. And the moors were believed to be a crossing place for dead spirits. Not a customs officer, no dragoon soldier would like to venture onto the moor at night for fear of the banshee, the wraith the spectral figure. You're painting a good picture. It's quite <laughs> creepy. <laughs> and if that's not enough spooky stories for one afternoon, I'm heading up the coast for more tales of gothic horror. Dominating Whitby's skyline is the hauntingly beautiful Whitby Abbey. It's one of the most iconic landmarks in Britain and famous for its association with Bram Stoker's Dracula. It's absolutely stunning. Danny, you look after this site, so tell us why it's such an iconic landmark. The initial uh, claim to fame is actually from the 7th century. Um, they decided to host a synod, which is like a meeting, mm. um, and it was to decide the date of Easter. And there was a monastery here at the time that had been founded by St Hilda, and the King of Northumberland asked her to host this meeting, and they basically sat down had a massive argument uh, and decided the date of Easter and it's the date that we still use today and secondly in the Victorian era we had a, a visit from Bram Stoker and when he was here he was really inspired by the, the views and the town and he wrote Dracula uh, and started to write Dracula while he was here. And you can understand why there was so much inspiration taken from this building it's such a foreboding structure isn't it? It really is it's got that sort of dark edge to it um, and when the storm clouds roll in you can really imagine Dra Dracula skulking around among the Abbey. <laughs> After getting my fix of the history, walking down the famous 199 steps and visiting the Whalebone Arch, I've been told there's something that's a must try. What is it about the Whitby Fish and Chips that's so special and makes them so famous? No, no great secret, it's just fresh fish, um, 
what you cook them in is very important. We always use beef dripping in, in Yorkshire. Oh, wow, beef yeah. dripping, really? Yeah. And the chips beef. as well? And the chips could, as well. Yeah. And how many portions of fish and chips a day? Oof. Can be up to a thousand. You're joking. That's in the restaurant. Wow, <laughs> what about here? Take away as well, so a similar amount. Wow. There we are, some nice freshly cooked fish and chips for you. Wow, that looks amazing. Okay. Thank you so Lovely. much. Enjoy I look them. forward to trying them. I will. Thank there you so you much. See Thank you again. Bye-bye. You. Bye. Enjoy. What a day. I've had the full Whitby experience. I'm just going to carry on tucking into these and enjoy the view. Delicious mm. stuff, making us hungry as well. Don't Very eat us some food so. for us here very shortly. Also up next, our gut 